This is one thing, keeping away from the truth. From looking within yourself. Another commentary from ulama we find in tafsir That al-muhasaba, it distracted you from looking inside. What am I doing with my life? Why am I running after this stuff? And you know, when you run after stuff, what happens when you get it? You get bored of it. Then you go run after something else. Then you get bored of that too. Then you go run after something else. Happens to all of us. If you're running after buying a home, once you buy the home, what happens? After a while, somebody else's home starts looking a little nicer than yours. Right? It just gets boring. You gotta redecorate it. You get bored. When your, your kids really, really wanna, want you to buy a video game for them, you buy it for them. How long did it before they get bored of it? A couple of days, they beat the game and that's it. It's finished. A new movie is coming out. You know, back when I was in New York, I always talk about it. When I was coming out, I think it was the Star Wars. That, like, one of them came out in the 70s and then another sequel came out. I don't know how many there are now. But when it came out, it was a big buzz in New York, right? And it was open, only opening in this one movie theater. And there was a line longer than the line for the passport for Hajj. These guys are waiting to get their ticket to see that movie all night. They're standing in Qiyam waiting to get the movie ticket, right? They want nothing more in life than to watch that movie. Some of them are even dressed in ihram. <laughs> They're dressed in the Star Wars gear, painting their faces, Jedi Knights, the works, right? Because they want to go see this movie. Once they go see this, they wanted nothing more. If you talk to them right then and there, you say, hey, you want to come and do some work or you want to do something else? No, 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 no. This is what I want to do. Once they finish watching the movie, what do they come out and say? Ah, it could have been better. It wasn't that good. The special effects were kind of cheesy. This and that. You just wanted this so badly. And what happened? You got deluded. You thought this is gonna bring you happiness. That's why you did it. But as soon as you were done, were you happy at the end? No. You figured something else. Man, I can't wait till the third one comes out. Now you moved on to the next thing. So you keep deluding yourself. You never stop and think, man, I'm never satisfied. Every time I get one, I want something else. Every, every time I get this, I want that. I, I, never get, I never get fulfilled. I never get content. So it even kept you from looking within yourself. It kept you from pondering over your purpose in life. This distraction, this want, this competition, it kept you from pondering, why am I here? Is my job on this earth only to run after things, and then run after some other things, and then run after some other things, and then go into my grave? Is that, is that why I was here? Is that what I was put here for? Because that's what animals do. They eat, then they get hungry again, then they go eat, and they get hungry again, and they go... So what's the difference between me and an animal? If this is what all I'm here for, then how am I any different from an animal? But this, you were so busy in this competition, you never had time to think about that even for yourself. Even if you did, it a fleeting thought, never something that you would truly ponder over. Then of course, ulama comment, it kept you from paying attention to this message, to this Qur'an. This Qur'an was supposed to open your eyes. It was supposed to show you what your purpose in life is. It was supposed to give you the best introspection, look inside your own consciousness for you. It opens yourself up to you. But you didn't have time for this Qur'an because you're too busy with takathur, it's deluding you. But the most interesting commentary I found is, you remember what the last surah was? Surah Al-Qari'ah? Al-Qari'ah? The loud knocking noise from the beginning? Hawiyah at the end, hellfire? Allah says, Alhaakum wa takathur. This distraction was so huge, it even kept you from Al Qari'ah. It even distracted you from the fact that the entire earth will be rattled, that hellfire will be brought forth, and some people's scales will be heavy, and some people's scales will be light. That huge reality that you learned about, that you memorize, that you even recite. Many of us recite that surah because it's short and we're in a hurry, right? So we recite it. And yet, even though we recite it, we're distracted from that reality. How can that be? Al-Hakum wa takathur SubhanAllah. That's Allah's commentary in the beginning. Let's look at some of the things that ulama have said in regards to this ayah. First, we'll look at the parallel between this and Surah Al-Adiyat. Remember, Al-Adiyat talked about attitudes in dunya and the surah also. In that surah, Allah Azza wa says, "Inna al-insan li Rabbihi laka nud." No doubt, the human being is very disloyal, ungrateful to his master. Wa inna hu ala thali kala shahid, and no doubt he is a witness to that truth. Wa inna hu li hub al khairi la shadid. There is no doubt his love of good, his love of stuff, things in dunya is very intense. And now Allah is saying, "Your love is so intense that he said in that surah. In this surah, he's saying, your love of those things is so intense, it ends up doing what? Distracting you." So it's the next step. What did that love end up doing? It ended up distracting you. There's a solid connection between the two things. Al-Hazamakhshari comments, إِذَا شَغَلَهُ 
Meaning, this plentiness or this desire, it kept you busy. Not only in your mind, but even in your activities, it kept you busy. He defines the kathr as, as, fol- as following, At-tabari fil kathra, wa tabahi biha, to show off in plentiness, and to be proud of it in and of yourself. Wa an yaqul ha'ula'i nahnu akthar, wa ha'ula' nahnu akthar. And so that some of them would say, we have more. And the other would say, no, 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 we have more. And that's what your con- entire life would be spent, just saying who has more and who has less. Subhanallah. At Takathur commented again by uh, Ash Shawkani rahimahullah, تَفَاخَرُوا أَيَّهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ أَكْثَرُوا عَدَدًا That they show off to one another who has more in terms of what. And then he says, أَوْ أَرَادَ أَلْهَاكُمُ التَّكَاثُرُ بِالْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ إِلَىٰ أَنْ مُتُّمْ وَقُبِرْتُمْ Very important comment. He said the distractions, it may perhaps are distractions of money and children. The distractions that Allah is talking about, Takathur, is two things, money and children. Why is he saying that? When ilha is mentioned elsewhere, what does Allah say? La tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum. With the verb, the, the verb for distraction associated in the Quran is with wealth, assets, and children. That's one place. Another th- place is takathur. So in Surah Al Hadith, he says, Wa takathurun fil amwali wal awladi. So with the first word of the ayah, ilha, we also find amwal and awlad. With the second word, takathur in the Qur'an, we also find amwal and awlad. We find both things. So both amwal, meaning assets and children, we want more and more and more for them, or of them. And on the same time, at the same time, both of them are incredible distractions from our real purpose in life. They can become enormous distractions. One slight comment that should be used to clarify, when it says takathur fil awlad, Plentiness in terms of children, it means a few things. It doesn't just mean having lots of children. Plentiness in terms of having lots of children. Of course, we're living in times where people don't want to have a lot of kids. It's bad for the economy. Right? And there are even some countries in the world where there's a policy, you can't have a certain, more than a certain number of kids. And you know, they try to play with the order of Allah, and then it come back, comes back to haunt them. Why didn't they want to have more children? They didn't want to have more children because they can't afford it, the economy won't support it. And what ended up, ended up happening now in places like China? Now there's a new economic crisis. We don't have enough of a workforce to handle the, the infrastructure demands of our country because we curbed the population. So there is a new economic catastrophe now that they themselves created because of curbing population. Subhanallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. So you have both, you know, the order of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anyway, the second me- meaning that is not often caught is when Allah says takathurun fil amwal, it means, or fil awlad, it means you want more for your children. In other words, you know this competition, I should have more than the other? It transcends into your children. You say, my kid should have more than the other guy's kid. My kid should make it to the team. Why did he get picked? Why did that one get an A and my, mine got a B? I'm going to go complain to the teacher. How come his son got a B? Why well, has nothing to do with your son? You, your son got a C for his own reasons. That has nothing to do with him. But you're always comparing yours to someone else's. Yours to someone else's. So th- this becomes petty not just for you, but even for your children. So, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Actually, before we go to what Allah says in the next ayah, let's look at a few more comments. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu added an interesting reading of this ayah. He, he used to add an extra hamza in the beginning. أَأَلْهَاكُمُ takathur Or أَأَلْهَاكُمُ takathur. You know what that means? Did this, this urge of plentiness, this competition of plentiness, was this what distracted you? Is that what kept you busy? So it's actually he reads it in the form of a question. He reads this ayah in the form of a question. And you know when you were yelling at someone, sometimes you yell at them in the form of a question? Is that what I taught you? Is that what you just did? Now you don't say, you just did it. You say, is that what you did? Can, can you explain to me why you did that or how you did that? So you put it in the form of a question because it's part of zajr, yelling at someone, scolding them. So Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala who has that reading of the ayah. Abu Muslim finally, actually we already covered his comment. His comment was basically that it could be a shared sentiment among people. Okay, so we'll uh, glaze that over inshallah. One last place we'll look at in the Qur'an in regards to the first ayah, which is uh, in Surah Al-Kahf, which is a good explanation of Al-Hakum al takathur You know the story of the two farmers? One of them had a small garden, the other one had a much better off garden. How did he show takathur? He says to the poorer farmer, the, the wealthier one says to the poorer one, he says, أَنَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْكَ مَالًا وَأَعَزُّ نَفَرًا I am more than you in terms of wealth. 
And I am more powerful in terms of manpower. I have a lot more sons that take care of my business. You're a loner. You don't have anybody helping you out. So he said, he established this. نَحْنُ أَكْثَرُ And the other one says, نَحْنُ أَكْثَرُ So he was showing this takathur to the other. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.